are you falling in love? Congratulations, I recommend telling them about Pluto and Charon, I think that it will probably work. Okay, so you know Pluto, the second largest dwarf planet in our solar system, we used to think it was way bigger, and then we found out it wasn't, and then people got mad about that, that Pluto? Its largest moon is called Charon, but saying that Charon is a moon of Pluto is actually kinda complicated. In a more conventional planet-moon system, you got a little moon and a big planet, and the moon is going around and around the planet, and the moon is having a gravitational effect on the planet, like Earth's moon is causing our tides, but in the Earth-Moon system there isn't really any question of which one is orbiting the other. But Charon is almost half Pluto's size, which is a very different mass ratio, and it means they're kind of orbiting each other, or at least they're both orbiting a gravitational center which is actually in between the two bodies. Well that's weird, how did we get here? For the longest time scientists thought the Pluto-Charon system formed the way that the Earth-Moon system formed, which we're pretty sure is in the early solar system, this is also an incredibly romantic story by the way, in the early solar system there were actually two planets at our distance from the sun and they eventually fell into each other which exploded both of them and when the dust settled there was what remained was a planet and a satellite with pieces of each other lodged in their cores. But towards the end of 2024 a group of researchers pointed out that Pluto and Charon are too made of ice for that to make sense and proposed a different model. Instead of this catastrophic collision where both participants would have shattered and then re-coalesced into this dual dwarf dwarf planet system, Dr. Denton and team proposed it was actually more likely that Charon and Pluto had been fantastically lucky. Yes, attracted to each other by gravity, but it's such an incredibly gentle speed and angle that when they did finally touch it was more like a kiss. And in fact, that's what they named this model, the kiss and capture scenario, where Pluto and Charon would have come together without damaging each other, and then spun around as this snowman-shaped object for about 10 to 15 hours before separating, but now gravitationally bound together forever. They're also mutually tidally locked, so Earth's moon is tidally locked, which means it's always pointing the same face at us. We only ever see one side of the moon, at least from Earth, because it's just stuck in Earth's gravity in that position. Pluto and Charon are both like that, so no matter where they are in their orbit, they are always pointing at each other with the same face, and I think they're in love, and you can trust me because I'm a science communicator.